Check me out. Look, I know perfect time, it feels like I'm too late. And I know I'm still great in spite of my mistakes. You know it's authentic every round I say. Alright, what's going on, y'all? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode. Perfect time in multi sport. Have y'all noticed I have stopped saying yo yo? Um, anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, welcome. I'm really excited to be back. I'm excited to uh, it change things up a bit. As we mentioned last week, uh, we we're going to be shifting and actually having these pre recorded uh, episodes to just give you guys a better quality. Um, so I'm excited to bring you that better quality, not only in the, the interview, but also in this uh, content that we're giving you. And today, I'm joined by a new friend, uh, Katie. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Mike? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. You know, we just had to work through this technology issue, but we're figuring it out. We're going. Uh, so, how's your day been? It's been... Um... It's been long, but this is been, I'm very happy to be here. All right. Cool, cool. Um, so, tell, to tell you all how uh, I was introduced to Katie, um, just through the community, as folks know, I love building community, I love building relationships, and I love the multi sports space. So, as a cyclist and other things, uh, I was re Katie reached out, she's like, hey, I'm just getting into cycling, um, and I've loved the community that I've been able to build as a result. And I want to make sure I give that to other people. Um, we'll talk about that here in a bit, but definitely want to make sure I, I give you guys the, the preview of that so you can get excited. But enough about that, more about you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And in particular, tell us where you're from, where you're at, um, how, you got, why, how you got here, and why you're staying. Okay, so I am, I live here now in the D.C. area, and um, I'm originally from North Carolina. Yeah, what part? From the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area. Okay. Uh, and so um, I moved here for school to attend University of Maryland. All right. The university, what is that, a uh, turf? Yes. What is a turf? I'm, it's it, a turtle. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> I, I've never heard of like a turf as a turtle, but... I know enough people that went to Maryland that I should know that. But uh, so, what's making you stay? What am I staying? Yeah, why are you staying here? Why? Oh, why am I staying here? Oh, so I'm studying um, for a master's of social work, and okay. um, but I do plan on staying there after oh. after I graduate. All right, all right, cool. Hey, at least you have a plan. Like a lot of people, they come to DC and the DMV area. They're like, like me. I'll be here for a few months and then move to Miami and then something happens and you get stuck. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to say. I love, I love the area and I love the people. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. And we'll definitely get a little bit more into that in, in particular, what you mean by the area and the people, especially the people. Um, so, take us back a little bit to your time in North Carolina. Like, what was it like growing up for you? What was your childhood like? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> well, um... I would say I had, I would say I had a, you know, a really good childhood, and my, okay. uh, my loving parents, and yeah. brother and sister. Um, Where do you fit in? Are you like the oldest, youngest, yeah, middle? Yes, so I'm the oldest. Okay. Um, the oldest child. I would say, my childhood was a bit like rough, or actually mm -hmm. I feel like part of my childhood I didn't really, um, yeah, honestly, I feel like I probably didn't have much, too much of a childhood after, you know, going through an amputation at 14, but, mm. um, yeah, I'm actually glad that I'm not a child anymore, that I'm I, I, an adult, but I, yeah. I understand, yeah, I understand, and we'll definitely, uh, talk a little bit about that, um, won't dig too much in as much as you're comfortable yeah. talking about it, right? Um, so... Thinking about that, obviously, knowing that PTM, Perfect Time in Multisport, is a space where we talk about uh, athletics, especially. Um, so I'm curious, as a child, were you an active child? Uh, what was that athletics like for you in your life? <laughs> Actually, I was not an um, athletic as a child. I right. tried out for the uh, girls of basketball team in eighth grade. I uh -huh. did not make it. I think I, I, think, I want to think I tried out for softball at one time. I yeah. didn't make that either. 
Um, so, sports weren't your thing? No. <laughs> That's fine? That's fine? No. So, no. What, what was the thing that kept you engaged as a, as a, as a young, as a child? I don't even know that. As, as an weird. adolescent. I was like overweight as a child. Um, okay. I... You love food? So, what was your favorite thing to eat as a child then? Oh my gosh, I remember just like, my, <laughs> my parents would like get like these like apple pies from like Sam's Club. I mean, yeah. I, it was it wasn't like healthy food, but um. Who? <laughs> I ate honey buns all the time. <laughs> I remember honey buns, yeah, or like little um, Debbie, like the yeah. little snacks. Yeah. That was yeah. so funny. I haven't thought that in years. Hey, that's that's my thing. So, <laughs> so uh, food food was uh, the main thing. And they, they, yeah. Food and television. Yeah. Alright, what, what was your favorite TV show? I'm curious. Oh my goodness, I remember like Nickelodeon, like watching um, was like King and Cal or um. Yeah, that was that was that. my jam. Um, all that. Yeah. Oh man, take me back a little. Oh bit. my gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, so I, I know we touched on a little bit uh, as we were, got into the first initial part of talking about your childhood, but um, remembering that. Uh, you did become an amputee yeah. at a really young age, so um, not, you can go into it as much as you want to. Again, this is definitely your space and your time, so take this conversation wherever you want it to go. Um, but as you think about that, I'm curious, how did the folks around you show up for you and support you through that time? So family, uh, your friends, your school, and then and the back end, we're going to talk about the technology aspect right. a little bit. Um, honestly, I would say after, so I did experience an amputation after I had a black blood clot um, following um, heart surgery. And so I had vascular complications which led to a blood clot, which um, led to gangrene. Um, I was told that gangrene came up both my legs so they could save the right one, but they couldn't save the left. Um, and so basically, um, I woke up with my leg gone. And um, just like looking back at that time, I would say that um, just regarding, I mean, truthfully, truthfully, like my parents were there for me, but in regards to um, family beyond that, um, yeah. I would not say that there was support. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember talking to my grandparents over the phone, but in regards to, um, I mean, truthfully, you know, my family is dysfunctional. Who, who isn't? You know, whose family isn't dysfunctional? But in regards to support, there there was not too much support mm -hmm. after, like beyond the uh, immediate family. And so, um, you know, I remember like my mom took as much time as she was able to yeah. off of work to stay with me. But then eventually, she had to go back to work, and um, I. Um, I did remember doing hospital school until I transitioned back into going to school in person. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, those were just, I mean, honestly, like, those were just like really hard times and just, yeah, um, yeah like uh, uh, very hard times. I understand. And thank you for sharing uh, a little bit about that. Um, so you talked about your family quite a bit in that, in that response, but how about your friends? Uh, and oh and yeah, how, how were your friends showing up? And, how, I, yeah. and also being mindful uh, for me as I even ask the question, recognizing that you're a teenager at this time, right? So yeah. what does friendship actually look like in me at that time? I, I had like one friend, um, I had one friend at the time. Um, but honestly, and obviously this is like really painful to talk about, but honestly, yeah. when I, Honestly, like it was a really isolating time for me. Um, I have, I have a lot of memories of honestly just looking, you know, out the mirror. I'm not I'm sorry, not the mirror, but look out the window, like in the morning, because yeah. I would see like my peers who I would, you know, that one time I would catch the school bus with. Yeah. You know, I would be staring out the window like they're catching the school bus. I'm there at home. You know, I can't even walk. You know, oh, and right. um, I would, you know, when three thirty three o'clock would come around, like, I would be back looking outside the window, and I would see them, you know, yeah. you know, coming off the school bus, so, I mean, I would say until I was 16, because when I was 16, I was able to learn how to, you know, I was able to, you know, get my driver's license, but 
up until that time, though, I mean, it was just extremely isolating. Mm -hmm. um, and then just due to just, you know, challenges I was having once I did go back to school, um, which was incredibly hard. And also, you know, that was, you know, during a time where, you know, it was like before, like September 11th, it was mm -hmm. before, you know, prosthetics were more visible to where we have like cell phones, um, well, where I had a cell phone, you know, <laughs> before yeah. like, you know, I was able to, you know, like we did, like there was like no Instagram, there was, yeah. like it, I did not see, I wasn't able to see people, especially um, young people who looked like me, like that was like very rare. So, I mean, I, I honestly, um, when I look back at that time, just, I mean, yeah, when I do look at look back at that, those years, it's like, my gosh, I could see where, like, things could have been done differently or mm -hmm. where, where I should have had support or my parents should have had support um, or I look back like, at the community. But I think, um, you know, I'm just thinking I'm so grateful that things have evolved, that times have changed, yeah. you know, and that um, so many things regarding disability is more visible now, so there are more resources in the community, but also but, but during that time, I... Um, I actually, you know, ended up like not finishing high school traditionally, choosing to leave um, the school, and oh. um, also too, um, just given, you know, like the prosthetics I had at the time. I mean, it was extremely painful. Um, like it would be hard just to even sit in, like in a classroom and like in a chair. And I did not know too, like how to ask for accommodations. I didn't know how. I didn't even know really that accommodations like were a possibility. Um, so at what point did you realize accommodations were actually a possibility? Honestly, and, it, and what yeah. does what does it, I'm sorry, what does accommodations actually mean for the folks yeah. that are not really aware of this language? So I honestly did not know that accommodations for school were available until I was like in my early twenties and I was going to a community college. Right. And when I got those. Um, Accommodations through disability services. Um, I mean, that was the game changer for me. And yeah. so, I and to explain a little more about that, like for example, like if I had you know pain, like physical pain, um, and I'm not like that's impacting like my ability to do work, um, I could have an accommodation like for an extension, for example, for mm -hmm. you know like a paper or whatever. And so like it's. <coughs> Like getting like you know, having accommodations for just like the things I go I go through um like that's an, an, that's it's allowed me to get through school it's allowed me to get my bachelor's degree and now I'm working on my master's degree and also as time has changed um and as I've changed like those accommodations have like they've changed too I love you that. know and so yeah I love that so you definitely talked a, a little bit on that technology piece of uh. Uh, 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 with being an MT and the prosthetics. Uh, so I'm curious though, and taking a step back, because I know you, you jumped a little bit to yeah. the community college uh, piece, but I'm curious, as a teenager, you talk about the physical health and the relationships you had, but how do you navigate this space in a mental, in a mental health way? Oh, goodness. Um, so these are good questions, Mike. So <laughs> honestly, um, how did I navigate? I probably didn't do a good job. I will say, so I remember, um, like, being, you know, I was taken to see, like, a therapist. Um, honestly, I don't think anything was really helpful for me during mm -hmm. that time. I was, honestly, I remember, um, truthfully, to be truthful, I remember, like, um, you know, there, I was on, like, I was on, like, an antidepressant, and it, it wasn't actually until, like, two years after... Um, losing my life that I you know was able to even begin grieving the loss of my life because I couldn't feel because I was on a I guess the wrong type of antidepressant I, I was right. numb I was numb you know and so but after I remember like my mom would come and give me one of those little pills and I and I look back at this I think to myself oh my god how did you know my younger self like know like this is doing something to me because you know, eventually I, when I made that connection, she would come and give me like my little pill and I would go and I would put it in a plant. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so great. And I'm glad I did because I, yeah. yeah, it wasn't until, because I lost my like 14, but it wasn't until I was like 16 when I finally began, 
grieving it because I could uh, feel again. Yeah. So what did that grieving process actually look oh like? Oh my god. Um, it was shit. It was hell. Um, yeah. I mean, I remember like I have like no. I think a lot of it like I repressed because it's so fucking so so painful. Yeah. But I think that um, you know, I have like memories of just like sitting like in my room and like just crying or like you know hitting my head against the wall. Um, I remember like I had this might be too much information. But I remember like I had like a shower chair and um, I remember like I was so upset that like I took the shower chair and I like you know threw it in the closet and like I you know I beat it up against the wall so that like you know, my parents couldn't see that there was like a you know I put like a kind of like a, it wasn't a hole but there was you know I you know I banged in the shower chair in there so yeah. um, it was. It was painful, and it was also a time where I so badly wanted to belong and fit in, and I could not do that. You know, I remember um, just struggling just to keep up. Like, I have, like, memories of being trying to be a part of, like, a group of other, like, young people, and I, because I wasn't physically able to, like, keep up, like, I remember, like, just feeling, like, bad about myself, you know, like, it's like I could never keep up, it's like that was like an ongoing thing, like, I could never keep up, I could never keep up, and, um, and also just because of that, and and then just the pain, like, the physical pain from, like, the prosthetics I had at the time available to me, and again, this was, like, 20 years ago, um, which could result, like, often, like, with, like, just wounds and blood, and, like, you have to, like, you're walking in that, and so, but most of my childhood, I feel like, after amputation was just, I feel like I spent mainly, mostly, like, in a chair, in a home. I was, I stayed home a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, you, you just started to talk about the technology piece again, and, um, and earlier you mentioned this, you, you're going through this experience and losing your leg pre-9-11, um, September 11th. What did that look like, and how did that technology piece actually shift? And what did you what did you notice in that time shifting? I actually um, I remember when September 11th happened because I remember I was at home in my room and I was listening to the radio. I listened a lot to AM radio um, during that time because it felt like it was a friend. I felt like there was someone with me. Um, and I remember hearing that on the radio. Um, in regards to when I saw like a shift in regards to like prosthetics, it would not be until many years later, unfortunately. Um, yeah. How, how old were you about when you started to when notice I got that shift? That shift. So I was actually was I twenty or twenty seven. It was like 2013. So it was 2013. So yeah, I actually, yeah, so I lost, yeah, I lost my leg in 2000. It was 2013 when I actually got like my first microprocessor knee. Wow. And um, I actually went out of state to get that. And so. Um, Were you still in North, Car- North Carolina at this yeah, time? Yeah, I was okay. in North Carolina, yeah. And I actually went up to New York to get Wow to get that and so there's a company there and so um so with insurance companies and with like prosthetic technology um it can be really hard to obtain this equipment and um often it's you know you have to like fight the insurance company um but yeah but so but i used basically a like a manual knee before that so it's only been like what 13 So it's only like seven, eight years that I've, you know, been using more of the computerized technology. But um, for the, for, for yeah, for most of my time as an amputee, I use the, you know, manual me or non-computerized technology. Mm-hmm. So you definitely see, seen the shift in how not only the folks in, in your community probably was able to support, but uh, the folks outside of your community through maybe it be through 9/11. Um, but it was definitely a shift in that support, it seems like. I also know that you work in the support space and the counseling space now, and that's something that you're working towards, especially to work more. So 
tell us a little bit about what you're doing now in your person in your professional space and like how the, how the things you went through as a child and all you've been going through in your whole life how do they play a role in doing what you're doing now yeah so right now um i'm finishing up my master's of social work and i'm actually hoping to work with um the amputee population or the young people who have disabilities um I would say, like, my biggest motivate, yeah, my biggest motivation for wanting to do this is, is that I don't want for another child. Um, yeah, I don't want for any child, but especially, you know, not another child who has um, a disability to um, go through the lows that I've I've experienced in regards yeah. to just questioning my self-worth or also just you know one of my biggest regrets um is that you know i i spent many and yeah it's hard to even like think about but i spent um my god like probably like yeah like nearly like 20 years like just being gosh it's hard to say it's hard to talk about but it's i guess because it's like I think it's hard to talk about or to say because mm-hmm. I know there's a better way now and I know right. what I can do differently now and also like I make different choices now but I you know but I don't want for another child to experience you know hiding themselves or be ashamed of themselves right. you know because that's I mean I've done that for like nearly 20 years you know yeah. and you know I had I had you know I was struggling with my self esteem before I lost my leg, and then losing my leg, you know, that was just, you know, yeah. you know, shattering. And so, I, um, you know, I, like, as a teenager, like, I remember, you know, like, I would like wear man, man, men's clothes. I would like, I would take um, like sweatshirts, like men's shirts. I would like wrap my waist around. I would do everything I could to hide that I had a prosthesis, you know, or to hide like where, you know, it kind of like sometimes can stick out a little bit, but I would, you know, just do everything I could to just hide, you know, yeah. myself, and it's, um, I don't want, you know, when I look back, like, those years were so, like, paralyzing, like, I, I literally, like, it's like my life stopped, like, I don't want for anyone to go through that, you know, and to just, um, spend just so much time, if not years, just like living in fear, and really, it's um, yeah, it's it's just it's not worth it. It's not good. Like you don't have to. Um, yeah, I guess like I've been like on this journey of like self like discovery and like self love, and it's just yeah. like you know I yeah I yeah I don't even know what to say. I mean, you're saying all the things. Okay. I'm like, I can just get out the camera. I mean, you know, you, you, you're definitely saying all the things and, like, really expressing the things that you, you it's almost like you're sitting here reading my cards. I think I have self-discovery, actually, in here. So, um, but as we transition and, and from talking about that work piece, right, um, you are continuing to do the work, and, and although you're working towards getting your master's to do this on a more official professional uh in a more official in a professional space um you're doing that work and that's how we met so thinking about how we met and thinking about um the ways we actually initially connected uh you're doing this bike clinic so tell us a yes. little bit about that so what is it when is it why is it yeah let's talk about it so i am organizing with the help of so many wonderful people a amputee cycling clinic um, October 4th okay. in Rock Creek Park and um, oh my gosh I'm just so excited about this <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, so why was this something uh, you actually wanted to do yeah so it's something I wanted to do because I have been learning how to ride <laughs> you have been what <laughs> yes learning how to ride my bike alright learning how to ride the yes, bike cool um, for like three months now and um, yeah. sorry I get so excited about it so, yeah, so I've so I um I've been I've been learning how to ride um like since uh, end of June towards end of June I got my bike 
a Shiloh. That's her name, Shiloh. Shiloh. Yes, and uh, so um, yeah, I want to say uh, I've been practicing for every day. I call uh, it practicing, but no, it's been like totally life changing for me. And one of the uh, like blessings about this bike is that I mean, I'm continuously like I learn every day. Like every time mm -hmm. I'm on this bike, I learn so much from her. Oh, sorry. It's like, I just <laughs> okay. I personalize it, but she's like, yeah, it's. It's brought me just like it's been so life changing for me because like mm -hmm. this bike forces me to like face my fears. It forces yeah. me to love myself. It's literally been like such an exercise wow. of just self love because it's like because like being on this bike yeah. makes me so happy and brings me so much joy. It's like that joy that this bike brings me outweighs like wow. the fear or the yeah, like the worry or concern that I may have of someone else looking at me because I have a prosthesis, you know, it's like, I'm, it's like each time I get on that bike, like, I, you know, each time I put on like my shorts mm -hmm. and I get on that bike, like it's, I feel like it's, like it's just been changing me, like it's done something like, I can't remember words, it, it does something like within me that's, because it's become stronger and stronger and it grows because like, where I'm at now compared to even like back in June, like mm -hmm. I really don't care what someone thinks. Like yeah. and now like I wear like for example shorts like at the grocery store. Like it's like, you know, trans like heard over to like so many like it's improved so many other areas, like all the areas of my life. Yeah. And so I always say, uh, in movement and physical activity is such a domino effect for me, All right, If I'm not active, if I'm not moving then so many other things are being impacted by this one little thing. Yes. All right. Um, so you talked about her, her name, is Shiloh. 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 All right. Talked about Shiloh, but I know there's another one that is in your history. Blue. Blue. Tell yes. us about Blue. So blue. <laughs> yes, Blue is my cruiser. Um. So I so I got Blue when I was twenty, like twenty years old. And I went to a bike store, because I wanted to learn how to ride a bike, uh -huh. and none of the other bikes worked for me. I thought that, um, because yeah, we, I tried getting on the other bikes that were there, that were available at the store, and um, it just wouldn't work, but Blue, the cruiser, did. Yeah. And so I thought that a cruiser was the only type of bike I could ride, and also my riding was only like just like a few minutes so i did do physical therapy i'm i remember like working with my physical therapist to be able to learn how to ride a bike and right. um when i got when i got blue i took blue over to pt and we we um rode blue in the parking lot like i did i remember like doing a circle yeah. and um being proud and then um i would do a circle like at my parents house and like yeah. a little circle but for me it's huge it's like even if i can only stand for like 10 minutes like that's just so huge and so, sorry, not even 10 minutes, but 10 seconds. Because one of the issues is that my foot would always come off. And oh, so wow. the prosthetics like, would always like come off. And so, um, you know, staying on the bike was just like, it was just a, a, a challenge. And so um, just being able to go for a few minutes, um, literally, that was, that was my, my cycling journey. Like that was, yeah. that was it. And I thought that, and even what's so interesting was even, oh my God, it was like, maybe it was just, it wasn't, it was like a, couple, like a couple of years ago, it was before I moved here, I remember I went back to the bike store to see if I could get on, if I could use another bike, and mm -hmm. um, nothing in the store worked. And wow. So, um, so that, that definitely changed because you have this new bike. So, um, and that, that's, I'm really happy you shared that in the way that you did, because the main thing in the story is that we really try to get across and tell all right, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're able to get out and be active, you are an athlete, and that's perfect. And you're perfect the way that you are. So, initially, you were getting out doing 10 minutes tops, and now you're putting together bike oh, clinics. Like 10 minutes, like not, 10 not even that. And now, like, you're organizing bike clinics. Like, yeah, how crazy is that, yeah, right? Yeah, so I didn't actually know that I could ride a road bike until very, yeah, until back in June. All right, um, so. so so yeah. that's perfect transition. Tell yeah. us about the experience. So, what was that like when you learned yeah, that? Yeah, so with the pandemic, when the pandemic started, um, which was entirely like, terrifying for everybody, but um, it actually, prior to that, I was going <coughs> over to the Y, and I was, you know, um, I just discovered, like, group exercise classes, and mm -hmm. um, I was learning how to do 
you know, so I was becoming like more active. And then like when the pandemic started, you know, I you know, didn't have the opportunity to exercise or to, to get out like that anymore. And um, I started having physical pain in my back and just um, also just, of course, like becoming depressed and also like staying home and eating like more and gaining weight. And so, you know, I wanted to get back into, I wanted to ride my bike because yeah. I've seen on Instagram, there's all these other amputees who are like riding their bikes. And so, you know, I remember like telling my prosthetist, like, oh my gosh, like I wish I was like Melissa Stockwell, I wish I was like Brenna. Um, and so, and there are amputees who are um, par- Paralympians who are, yeah, uh, yeah and they're, um, yeah, they're on Instagram. And so I would always like go to clinic, like showing like Jamie, like my, um, my phone and some, somebody on Instagram who's, you know, doing something wonderful and saying like, I wish I could do that too. And so, but finally, like in June, um, yeah, so in June, I, 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 I drove down to, my parents' house and I picked up Blue. All right. Yeah, and I brought Blue back and I um I was over I took Blue over with a friend and Blue over to um to D C mm-hmm. and um over by the Lincoln and I rode Blue. Oh, I mean, of course I'd have this problem because also my leg would I mean, it would, would slide off, but I, I I was I rode Blue and then I ran into another amputee who goes to where I go to and wow. and um and I ran into her, and like she said, you know, like she's so proud of me. And then um, she said, "How like she wants to learn how to ride a bike." And oh, like, really? it was just like this, like wow. like just like a god like miracle moment. Because when I saw Aggie, it just like I said, "Oh my gosh!" It was just like it was confirmation that yeah. okay, like you can do this, you know. And um, and that's and then just given like you know, Blue had like spider had just been had you know spider webs you know you know given up and gotten on her and just. Was just dirty and also like given the chain and mm-hmm. I wanted to like just I needed to take her to the store I needed to take her to the store to make sure everything um, was okay just you know maintenance wise and yeah. so that's what brought me into uh, track. <laughs> so brought you to track. So yeah. And they uh, eventually you got this new bike. Um, but before we get into the transition from Blue to Shyla or Shiloh. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I know I'm mispronouncing it. Shiloh, is it Shiloh? Shiloh, all right. I won't do it again. I'll try not to do it again. I'll probably do it again. Um, so when, before I transition to Shiloh, uh, think about Blue, I'm curious. What were some of your like favorite memories with Blue? My favorite memories with Blue was when I could accomplish, when I realized I could accomplish riding a bike with her in physical therapy. Mm-hmm. And so that was like, I was 20. <clears throat> Yeah, I was like 20, so that was, because that was huge, that was huge, um, and then, like, honestly, like, my, like, the memories I had of just being able to, like, go on a circle, so it's like, yeah. that was just, I mean, to me, like, I literally thought, like, that's all I could do, and so, to me, like, that was huge, and so, that's it's, um, you know, it was just, like, a celebration, even, like, yeah. before I moved here, like, I took a video, like, of my, um, like my parents like stood outside and watched me go out. So. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like it's like this is huge. So yeah. it's like look at me and so like, <laughs> I felt like that was I felt that was like my cycle like that was my experience in the bike. And so um you know, of course like I mean yeah, literally that's all I thought I could do because yeah. of just the limitations and the you know, the obstacles. So you quit you go into the track and you quickly realize that that's not all you can do. Not only would you know, your athletic abilities and the way you can move, but with the materials that you're in, in, the, in, in the bikes that you're able to use. So tell us a little bit about that experience so, because I know it was such a huge it, it, it journey for you. So yeah. tell us about that journey buying your new bike. So when I went to track, um, a man named Chris um, helped me, work with me. Well, he helped me to get blue out of the car and bring blue, blue in, and he yeah. helped me to put like, you know, you know, um, the, the chain lubricant on blue, make sure blue is okay. But um, did he get the spider webs off? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. That was good. I'm afraid of spiders. All right. But um, you know, I was telling him about the amputee, like the women I've seen on Instagram, the amputees mm-hmm. who ride bikes and how. Um, I said, I said, they have bikes just like that, you know, and they had bikes just like the bikes I saw in the track store, and yeah. um, he told me that he said that he could see, he said that you could, he said, you could do this, mm-hmm. you could do this, um, like, 
he really believed that I could get on, I could use one of those, like a real, like a real bike, a real road bike, and, um, and I didn't even know it was called like a road bike at the time, I just thought like, oh my god, that's the type of bike Melissa Stockwell uses, and so, um, like, <laughs> and so because it's like, that's the type of bike Melissa uses, it's like, I want that, but when he said that he could see me on those, he said that I could do it, you know, I, you know, like, when I left there, like, his words just, um, you know, they just stayed with me, and yeah. like, two days later, like, because it's like, his words just kept, it's like, they haunted me, it's like, I just kept, like, yeah, his words just stayed with me, that someone, be- he believed that I could ride one of those bikes, just like Melissa Stockwell, and, um, that's when I, I, I went back to track. Love it. So, I know, uh, Blue is Bay. But what was the light transition into this new found love? Into Shiloh. So, so the story from Shiloh is that so when I yeah when I went back to um to to, to see because because you know he said he could he could I could do it he could he could see me doing it um when I went back to Trek um first I went to um I went to one I went to one location. And I got on, I got on the bike, and um, well, first I called over there, and um, and they said that they would hold um, two bikes for me to come and see, and I just thought, like, gosh, like that's just so sweet. They're gonna hold it for me, and so like no one can buy it until I can get there, and so um, I drove over to um, Georgetown to to check it out, and um, at first um, when I got on the bike, like I couldn't get on it, like it's the same experience like what I had, and. Um, Back in Chapel Hill when I was right. when I was there, and which is how I ended up with Blue. But then, um, and so like they were so sweet, but like we kept trying, it didn't work. Like I couldn't get on the bike; it just would not work. And so going back home, um, you know, I, remember I was feeling like down, and depressed, and then you know, um, because it's like you know, I had my hopes up because like okay, right. well I thought I could do this, but then I guess I can't. But then on my, you know, on my way back home, I said, you know what? I was like, let me just stop at this other location. So, you mm-hmm. know, it's close to where I live. So, I drove to the other location in Rockville. And, um, still a truck store? Yep, yeah, still another truck. I said, let me just try this one more time. Right. And so, I drove, yeah, because I said, well, it's not that far from where I live. So, I stopped there. And then, um, Brenda, who's the manager there now, um, she actually, they had like one size 50 mm-hmm. for me, one frame, like one bike that would fit me. And, um, she actually, like my God, she showed me how to. She has a background in physical therapy, and she actually showed me how to get on the bike, how to tilt it, how to get. She showed me how to get on and off the bike. We went outside, and wow. she taught me. Like we were, the next thing, like I knew, like I was riding. Like she gave me yeah, permission. Right, yeah. yeah, she got permission to, um, you know, she got a, Actually, did I write a little bit in the story too? But she, um, you know, got a helmet for me. She, yeah. um. Spent like she spent like my god like probably two hours with me and just uh-huh. and taught me, you know and um yeah. So how long did it take you to actually feel comfortable on a bike then? Well, very comfortable because then I went back to the Georgetown location and I yeah. got the and I got the blue one because the one she had was purple and I didn't want purple and so <laughs> I went so I, so so we called over there and to find out um if they had so the bike that she had we called um and see if they had. Um, yeah, there's another color yeah. um, at Georgetown, so they, uh-huh. they held it for me, and so I drove back over there, and I showed them how, how I could get on the bike, and yeah. then um, they worked with me, and um, they were all happy, because like, I could get on the bike, and, um, and then we went outside, and I rode a little bit, so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so I do know you have a story with your uh, clipping in journey and your bike shoes. Yeah. So how was that? I mean, it's difficult for anybody, right? Um, so as a new cyclist, you go from using Blue, this uh, cruiser, and now you have Shiloh. Uh, so what was that clipping yeah. experience like so, for you? Yeah, um, so about like, maybe like close to, maybe like a month and a half or close to two months in my journey. Oh, yeah, maybe it was like a month and a half. Yeah, well, because so I'm always, like, so inspired by other cyclists. I'm always, like, when I see other cyclists, I'm always, like, watching what they're doing. I'm always, like, I love to, like, watch, like, their calf muscles fire up. I'm always, like, just yeah. just so inspired by guys. And so I noticed, like, um, they, you know, you guys, like, they, you guys clip in. They clip in. Right. And um, I wanted to clip in, too. 
And plus it looks really cool. The shoes look really cool. Yeah, and so um, I <laughs> said, you know, I wanted to, um, yeah, I said I wanted to get, you know, really good supportive shoes. And so I went over to um, Rafa, which I knew, um, I learned about from um, an employee at Track, um, Daryl. I learned about Rafa through Daryl. And so I went, yeah. oh, I went over to a Rafa and, um, yeah, so I'm really excited. So I went over to um, Rafa and um, I was like, I said I was, well, first off, I could not really park. There's no parking spaces. And they let me park <laughs> in like the little like alleyway, alleyway. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, that was really sweet. And so, um, but yeah, I started looking for some shoes and um, the manager um, told me, she said, you know, Katie, these are, her name is Becky. And she said, like, these are really expensive. And she said, I really want to make sure like this works for you. You know, so that you don't, you know, buy something that doesn't work because, like, you can't bring them up, like, after, you know, because if they're scratched, you know. And, right. and so she said, I've got, a, I said, I've got an old pair of, of shoes that you can borrow. And she said, I'll bring them tomorrow. And she said that she would help me to be, she said she had a friend who has, has a bike store and, mm-hmm. and said um, that said they could help me to get set up with being able to clip in and to have mm-hmm. that experience. And so, um, I remember, like, I was just so happy and excited, like, oh my gosh, like, I could not believe, like, somebody's going to be part of their shoes, and I'm going to get yeah. to actually get to experience, they're going to help me, and so, um, I came back the next day, and, um, yeah, she had the shoes, she took mm-hmm. me over to, um, a district cycle, to Matt's store, a district cycle works, and, um, okay. I got to meet Matt and her, and, um, someone else, I can't think of his name, but, um, they literally took Shiloh and set her up on a trailer, Sorry, not a trailer, but a trainer, and um, I got to experience like what it was like, um, like being clipped in, and so. I love it. So, and all these stories you talk about a different person, right? Yeah. And when you bring these people together, then they make, they make communities. So, can you tell us how that community has been showing up for you? Um, yeah, just share share that a little bit. Yeah. So I would say like the community part has been has been sharing sharing up with us daily basis with my um on my cycling journey like and that's that's one of the things that actually inspired the cycling clinic because i couldn't believe that um oh my god i couldn't believe that somebody was gonna like a stranger was gonna like let me borrow her shoes and yeah. then also um you know matt has like opened up the doors to his store to to help to help me like these people know, know me from adam and yeah. um you know it and then also um Matt's colleague, um, Austin, even like, um, because Matt said they were going to form a team around me to help teach me how to clip in, and and um, even, yeah, because even Austin um, came to me to one of my prosthetic appointments to help, you know, bring his expertise, but then also to learn more about the challenges I'm facing with my prosthetic, you know, as we're, you know, building me, you know, a, a cycling prosthetic, you know, um, but oh my gosh, like, that just, like, that was that just meant everything, and it still yeah. does, because it's like, who does that? Like, they did not know me from Adam, and yeah. offered to, like, not only teach me, but to support me, and to, um, you know, yeah, I just, I, I've never seen anything like that before, and um, it's, yeah, so that's, that's, I've met, like, I've met so many wonderful people as I have been down this journey the last three months, um, I mean, it's, I mean, if anything, I feel like it's the first time in a very long time since I felt community, and it's definitely the first time I felt community since I've moved here, and um, aside from my school community, but Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I would say it's community, it's the, it's the, it's the people who I've been so inspired by in my journey who have basically been the inspiration for um, creating a space mm-hmm. for other APTs, you know, for the cycling clinic. I love this. Um, so, staying along the lines of community and how you're developing relationships, uh, we were talking quite a bit about how you're devel- developing relationships with other people, but mm-hmm. I'm really curious about is how are you develop? how has your bike now changed? And I mean, actually read this because I don't want to mess it up. All right. How has your relationship changed with your bike? Interesting. How has my relationship, well, I still enjoy my bike. 
Um, how has it changed? How has my relationship? That's a good question. How has my relationship What's changed? What's like? I would say I've definitely become more confident on the bike, more, like I feel hmm, like more stronger on the bike. Mm -hmm. How's my relationship changed? And also, as you think about that, how has your relationship changed um, with as an athlete since you've gotten this bike? Um, I would honestly say that I'm becoming more comfortable with my body. Mm. Um, I'm becoming more confident in who I am, and meaning like. I'm becoming more confident in like what being an amputee means for me and what having a disability means for me. Like I'm like it's interesting because it's something that like I guess I'm discovering and learning like each time I'm I'm on it. So it's um it's like this relationship with this bike, it's like hmm, how do I put it into words? Maybe I can't put into it. I just know that it's changing me, and each time it's just something new and something different that I discover that makes me better, that makes me know myself more, that kind of like heals yeah. my heart from wounds that I never thought I would ever like yeah. heal from. Wow. Uh, uh, that makes me want to go around the bike. Great. Sheesh. <laughs> oh, man. Um, where do I go from there? <laughs> no. All right. So, how has your your perspective? You actually just kind of touched on this. How has your perspective as an amputee um, changed since riding since riding your bike and building this community? You know, I'll be honest. I think you know it's so interesting. When I was just saying, I was in my head, I was thinking like I love being an amputee. Like I have moments where, yeah, I love being an amputee. I love being me. I love you mm -hmm. know this is something that you know. I can't change, you know, I can't change the fact that my leg is gone and I can't, yeah, I can't disassociate from being an amputee, like I cannot not be an amputee, but I have moments where I love being an amputee and, um, sorry, what was the question, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no worries. Um, <laughs> how has your perspective changed uh, uh, <laughs> on being an amputee? Uh, since riding yeah. your bike and building this community. Yeah, so it's just that, like, I have moments where I love being amputee, and I think like, that just means, like, I have moments of just loving myself and just, yeah. um, like, the pain of just so much loss and just so much that I could not control as a child. Right. And that I could not even, um, yeah, describe or articulate things that I couldn't even attach a word to or label um it's like that doesn't really it's like that's not like it's like that's not so close to my heart like it doesn't hurt as much like yeah. it's not so present it doesn't show up so much like that pain yeah okay so i remember when we uh i think the first time we had a conversation and I was telling you about Perfect Time Multisport, telling you about the, the story and the name behind it and what it like really means as yeah. a foundation, right? And you were saying like, oh my gosh, it was the perfect time for Completely. me to get the bike. Completely. What do you mean by that? Uh, I, I kind of did it intentionally did not ask a follow-up question because I wanted to save it for everybody else. So yeah, why was it the perfect time to get your bike uh, at, at that moment? I think... Honestly, like, in my heart, I'm thinking maybe it was the perfect time for me to, to begin healing, to begin healing in ways that, yeah. I mean, I literally just did not, I mean, honestly, I never, the way my heart feels now, the way my heart is so open to just life and to living and to just exploring others, the world, myself, um, like, I feel things now and have and experience things now that I never even thought were possible. And so, um, just like having that joy, it's like, <sighs> yeah, sorry, I get so emotional, I can't, I forget the question. What did you say? No, no worries. I mean, 
yeah, this just well, was the perfect, perfect time. Oh, yeah, to because, it. yeah, because I think really, like, I think, you know, and just, you know, I don't know what other people believe, but just maybe, like, I think God just wanted me to heal. Like, maybe God was, like, saying, like, now is the time mm-hmm. for you to begin healing because this bike has been such a medium for just so much good and so and it's yeah. wild I would have never thought that it would come from a, a bike and I hope for others and, and people's lives maybe like it's it can be other things that are not bikes that people can experience joy and these gifts from but for me it was a bike and it was it's something like I mean probably if it wasn't for the unfortunately maybe if it wasn't for the pandemic happening I would have maybe never even yeah. you know I'm like starting to tear up. We need to start keeping the tissues in here for these interviews because that was the whole vibe. Um, whew. All right, so shifting a little bit, and that's kind of perfect because, um, yeah, shifting a little bit as we start to transition and start to wrap up. As folks can tell, we are not doing this live, but we do want to make sure we still bring you some authentic rapid fire action. So as we always do, Daniela and I are going to tag team quite a bit and get you some rapid fire here. You know what rapid fire is? No. All right, cool. So it's just, we're going to ask you some questions and you're just going to come out with the first sentence, um, first thing that comes to mind. I'm going to bounce. I'm going to say something. Danny's going to say something. And we're just going to wrap up with some of our staple questions. All right. All right. So first... This is actually Daniel's favorite question, but I'm still. What is your favorite memory in athletics? As an athlete. Now or as a child. Period. Oh. It can be now. Oh, I have so many memories. I can't choose. Um, I. It, it would be like the memories I have with um, like since I've had Shiloh and I'm with friends, like a different yeah. friends with others. I love that. All right. So you've mentioned a couple of your favorite MPT athletes. If you had to go on a bike ride with one of them, which one would it be? Melissa Stockwell. All right. So if you had to go on a bike ride with one of your favorite athletes, it would be Melissa Stockwell. Yes. Cool. Wanted to make sure I repeat that for folks that are not able to hear it. Um, so do you have any mentors in this space? Any athletic mentors? Oh my gosh, I have so many. I feel like it's um, <clears throat> it's been like the people who I've met in the community, like you, um, yeah. like um, Matt, um, now Daniela. I'm, oh my gosh, like I'm like um, like it's so like like when I get on Instagram, like I'm like always looking at people, and I'm just like in awe. <laughs> like and I look at people online, like people in person. I feel like yeah. everybody is like. I mean, I've met so many wonderful wonderful people who have just contributed so much insight and wisdom to my journey, and you know it's. Yeah, like I feel like everybody has been like my mentor, honestly. That's the great that's the great part about social media. It's like you're able to connect with people that you otherwise wouldn't be able to connect with in a really easy way. All right. So I love that. And to Matt oh. uh, and Matt, like I've had um people also like cyclists to like just stop me and like well yeah. on bike like on like riding, like they'll like talk to me and they'll like give me tips or share with me things and yeah. so like, so oh. yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Alright. Um, my next question for you is now that you're getting more and more familiar with a road bike, what other kind of cycling are you interested in doing? Mm-hmm. I want to get a mountain bike. I want to learn how to um I want to be able to ride on trails and so right. um I want to do that and also maybe like touring. I've heard about that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping to one day like have like um, another bike so I can do more things. I, I have I have a backup question. Yeah. Do you have a list of names in mind for that potential next bike, or do you name them based <laughs> on feeling? I totally name them based on feeling, and so yeah. That, yeah. That's a great question. I'm sure I I, I was thinking about that earlier, but I didn't ask. So. Thank you, Danielle, for asking that. 
Uh, so since Daniela had two rapid fire questions and going out of order and cheating the system, uh, <laughs> I have two. Uh, what is your favorite thing to eat before a long ride and after a long ride? Fruit. I like eating fruit before um, I ride. Yeah. And, um, That's your, what kind of fruit? Any fruit, but I like apple. All right. Cool. And after your ride? Um, well, I kind of like to eat all, like, anything, because... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that I mean, yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think every, anybody watching this and rides their bike and, and gets <laughs> moving will identify with that 100%. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <Danny>? <laughs> um, I think one of the questions I definitely want to know a little bit more about is um, I know that you're considering a trainer mm. to bike in the colder season. Yeah. How do you think it would feel to ride inside versus like the discovery that it's been to ride outside? Oh my god, it's gonna be this probably gonna suck. I mean probably it's probably gonna be the same for sure. But um, you know, I'm thinking just so that I can maintain like the muscle memory and also just stay strong um i i feel like it's worth it because i'm thinking i didn't want to like you know train and learn how to ride and then become weak you know and then in the spring like i'm not you know able to you know i don't want to like lose like yeah. the muscles that i'm developing talking about that. strength i love that so uh last question uh not necessarily in a rapid fire but since Daniela did help transition us from rapid fire to more in depth questions. The last question I have is What has athletics taught you about yourself? How they believe in me. That's awesome. I love that. And then the last question well, last two questions that I had is one, if you had to marry one, kiss one, kill one swim, bike, run. Now, I know you're not a triathlete, but this is kind of a triathlon space. So if you had to marry one, kiss one, kill one, swim, bike, run, what would it be? So would I swim, bike, or run? Yeah, if you had to marry, like, uh, for me, huh, I've never had to answer this. And it's, so for me, I would marry the bike, oh, I would kiss oh. the, the run, and I would oh. kill the swim. Actually, I would, ki I, would, I would kiss the swim and kill the run. I would, um, Marry the bike, I would kill the swimming. What's the other one? That you you would kill the swimming? Or uh, it's swim, bike, and run. Marry, kiss, kill. I would kiss the running, I would kill the swimming, and I would marry the bike. Alright, I love it. And then the last question um, that we always like to ask everybody that we come across um, is how, you, how would you define the perfect athlete? Someone who believes in themselves. That's it. And he loves others. Uh, yes, that's a really good addition. I love that. Um, so, again, thank you for joining us in this thank conversation. You. Thank you for everybody that's watching um, this recording. Thank you for everybody that's listening to this recording. If you're watching and you're curious about how you can listen, go to Apple, Spotify, Anchor, wherever you get your podcast. Just search Perfect Time in Multisport. And if you're listening and you're trying to figure out how can you watch it, you can just go to our YouTube channel, Perfect Time and Multisport. You can also connect with us on all social media, Perfect Time and Multisport. <laughs> um, and that, that's a ways to connect. And then also, quick thank you, big thank you to all of our partners. Um, they continue to make this happen. Um, and just the people that are real, really here in the front lines doing the, doing the work. They actually are the people that make this happen. Um, partners are important, but Daniela, uh, Roy, Freddie, shout out to Freddie that's joining the team. Um, and also got to acknowledge myself for making sure we make this happen and bring, you know, dope conversations like Katie to you guys. Um, so the partners that I definitely want to make sure I acknowledge, Philly Bike Expo, Urban Athletic Club, Athletic Brewing Company, Aftershocks, and Walls Cats. And in saying that, Almost fell. We got new cycling cats, so 
Everybody there, all the podcast guests, they're going to get a new cycling kit. This is going to be yours, your first one. So I always love this story about the cycling kit. If you're listening, you're like, oh, I'm tuning out. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit. So we have a key athlete. As you know, we always ask people, what is your definition of the perfect athlete? I had to take it back to high school, middle school. Uh, man, P, the function of being an athlete is perfect athlete, and you define a perfect athlete. Then we have synonyms that we created, Daniela, myself, and Roy, that define perfect for us. So this is all original. Uh, our thoughts, our ideas, and this is what we want to bring to you. And you can implement whatever you want because, again, you define a perfect athlete. Um, so this is going to be your gift, yeah. and if it doesn't fit, you can just change it, change the size. <laughs> Ain't it? Oh, that's perfect. Perfect athlete, perfect fit. It looks good. Oh, you could have tried it out earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let me make sure. Oh yeah. So I always, I usually ask folks uh, about their contact information, but we'll, we'll make sure we put that contact information and the note so again if you're watching this if you're listening or if you're on youtube uh instagram it will be in the show notes so make sure you connect with us make sure you connect with katie make sure you just connect connect with us and just keep this community growing um and then last but not least yeah definitely last i had to go to my next bar next car was number one so definitely but definitely last um we talked about the bike clinic so as we wrap up can you tell folks, remind folks about the information about the bike clinic? Yeah, so we're going to be having a amputee cycling clinic October 4th in Rock Creek Park from 9 to 11. And um, it's going to be rather small due just, you know, to the restrictions of, you know, due to the pandemic. Um, you know, COVID, we want to be you know, as safe as possible. But um, we're, we're going to have um, volunteers from, um, my gosh, so many volunteers. We have people coming from... Um, Oh, with, sorry, I'm so excited. Oh, okay. okay, so we have um, bike experts coming from um, the community. We have a prosthetist coming. We have um, physical therapists coming. We also have um, just, we have 12 awesome amputees who are signed up as our participants. Um, what are the age ranges? Oh my goodness, so our youngest is 11, and oh. um, our oldest, I think, is like maybe in the 50s, but um, we have people who have not been on a bike since their amputation and um it is just um it's incredible and it's and it's i feel like it's such it's been such a privilege to be able to organize this and um the excitement from our participants and also just the support from the community and just so many people so many people who, who have come together like it's just yeah it's just been amazing just the love from the the cyclist community here and um um yeah, it's just, yeah, I'm I love just, it. yeah, I'm happy. I love it. And I'm happy to be there. I'm looking forward to it. Um, thank you again for asking me. Thank you again for including me. And most importantly, thank you again for coming here and uh, sharing space with us and sharing your story with our community. Um, I, I know you were nervous, but I know this is <laughs> only the first of many. Um, so I'm happy we got you first. Bam. <laughs> but no, uh, good. Look forward to connecting with y'all um, and continue this going. So uh, the flyer for the event will be a link in the show notes. So look forward to staying posted and keep y'all posted with all the things to come. All right, peace y'all.